Hi, and welcome to your next lecture in Computer Science for Everyone. This lecture we're going to talk about buses. All the components in a computer are connected by cables, or to the North Bridge and the South Bridge, if you remember from the first lecture in this section. Each cable can only send one bit at a time. This means it can send one or zero at any given time. So a bus is actually not one of the cables. It's a group of the cables. So a 32-bit bus is 32 cables joined together. And a 32-bit bus can send 32 bits at a time. OK, so the buses connect components to one another. And today, they're either 32 or 64 bits wide. So what this means is that computers nowadays can either send 32 bits at a time or 64 bits at a time. 32-bit ones are quickly becoming outdated, and more and more 64-bit computers are appearing. So let's talk a bit more about 64-bit computers. 64-bit computers have 64-bit wide buses. This means that the buses inside the motherboard can send to other components 64 bits at a time. However, the components are made to receive and use 64 bits at a time instead of 32. This means that the processor, instead of working with 32 bits, it will work with 64 bits. This means it has double the space to work with, double the amount of memory. The registries can hold 64 bits instead of 32. And the RAM is made to hold more more RAM, essentially. If the buses are bigger, it means the RAM can store a lot more data. Let's have a look at that. In 32 or 64 bit computers, what is the maximum RAM? In a 32 bit computer, it is 4 gigabytes. This doesn't seem like a lot, and indeed it's not. 4 gigabytes of RAM, or I'd rather say 4 gigabytes of combined memory between the RAM and the graphics card memory. What I mean with this is that if you have a 32 bit computer with 4 gigabytes of RAM, and a graphics card with one gigabyte of memory, the total for that is five gigabytes, and that is more than the four gigabytes that your system supports. So there is a problem here, because one of the gigabytes will not be used in your computer. So when you're purchasing a, a computer, you should take a look. Does it have more than four gigabytes of combined memory between your RAM and your graphics card memory? And if it does, 32-bit is not a good option. Um, usually, well, always, you can install either a 32-bit operating system or a 64-bit operating system because all components, well, pretty much all modern components support 64 or 32 bits. So if your computer has more than four gigabytes of combined memory, install a 64-bit operating system. If your computer has less than 4 gigabytes of memory, install a 32-bit operating system. The maximum RAM for a 64-bit computer, and this is the reason why we will not be moving away from 64-bit computers for a while, is 16 exabytes, which, as you can see, is a lot of gigabytes. 16 billion gigabytes is probably more than we will reach in quite a long time. I am not going to get into why this is, why why the maximum is 16 billion gigabytes instead of 4 gigabytes. Um, hopefully we will understand it as the course progresses. If you don't, um, don't worry, it is not necessary for you at this stage. But I just wanted you to get away of this lecture with this piece of information, just in case you're buying a laptop or a computer and you're thinking, okay, should I install a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system? There you have the answer. If you've got more than 4 gigabytes of memory between RAM and graphics memory, install a 64-bit computer. A 64-bit operating system, rather. That's the end of this lecture. And in the next section, we'll go over graphics cards. And then that will be the end of the section. So stick with me for the last lecture in this section. And I'll see you then.